forgiveness. Hi everyone, Antonio Thornton, and today is March 13th, day number 72 of 365 Science of Mind. And our lesson for today is forgiveness. And you already know this is going to be a good one. So I have two quotes for today that I think are applicable for today's lesson. And the first one is, forgiveness doesn't excuse their behavior. Forgiveness prevents their behavior from destroying your heart. And that is uh, an anonymous quote. And the second quote here is from uh, Mandy Hill. And the quote is, dwelling on past bad decisions you've made only allows those decisions to keep defining you. Forgive yourself and move on. And again, two great quotes to live by, but definitely, definitely applicable for today's lesson of forgiveness. The text reads, it is only when we have completely forgiven others that we can get a clearance into our own minds. For we are judged by the judgment which, with which we judge. If we criticize, condemn, and, and censure, these are the attitudes that occupy our thinking. They will not only reflect themselves outwardly, they will also reflect themselves inwardly. They must, they must, for without is but an extension of the within, and the within is, a, is the determinator of that extension. If we want a complete clearance of our attitudes, we must forgive everything and everyone. Whether we like it or not, or whether we accept it or not, this is one of the greatest truths of life. Not only should we forgive others, but we should equally forgive ourselves until we release all of our own previous mistakes and failures, pain and suffering. We shall merely be monotonously repeating them today. A great deal of our trouble, both mental and physical, is built on an unconscious sense of rejection and guilt. It is necessary that each of us seek complete forgiveness toward both ourselves and others. And one of the things that comes up for me when I, when I read this and it talks about forgiveness is the, there's a Hawaiian philosophy of Ho'oponopono. And I'm going to see if I could spell that from memory. H-O apostrophe. O P O N O P O N O Ho Opono Pono. And I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. But in, in, in layman's terms, this this is the practice of universal forgiveness. Not necessarily, not limited to, but not necessarily just forgiving of someone who's wronged you forgiving of a situation, forgiving of a past, even forgiving of yourself, but a universal forgiving, taking responsibility for all that has occurred in the world, taking responsibility and forgiving the Holocaust, forgiving slavery, forgiving rape, murder, forgiving genocide, forgiving every perpetrator, forgiving every instance, for, for forgiving every opportunity that there is to forgive in a universal and holistic sense. And there's a lot more to it. I, I think that's a, a very general and baseline under uh, baseline explanation rather of the 
Ho'oponopono practice, but it's just releasing and, and forgiving all. Not from a place of guilt, because you may not have been directly responsible for or benefited from the, the Holocaust or slavery or, or any other type of uh, wrong that has been done from one to another. You may not be responsible for anything but or, or for anything that you, you may be asking or, or declaring forgiveness for. I don't even want to say asking forgiveness because that, that, that I think it takes away from the, the, the breadth of the practice in itself. But forgiving of all, forgiving of all, taking responsibility for and forgiving of all. And it's a it's a really interesting practice, and I and I recommend you you know take a look at it. Uh, also, there's a book, and I've not been on my game with these book authors, but this just came off the top of my head here after reading this, is uh, radical forgiveness. And I don't remember the gentleman's name, but I've I've recommended this book at, at least one hundred times at least 100 times and and not every time but almost every time the person who actually read the book came back and thanked me profusely for recommending radical forgiveness because not only does it talk about forgiving others uh, but it also talks about forgiving yourself and as as the text says today that both mental and physical ailments even come from the the holding on to past situations past regret and it's our objective to l let those go until we release all of our own previous mistakes and failures pain and suffering we shall merely be monotonously repeating them today and listen to this, a great deal of trouble, both mental and physical, a great deal of our trouble, both mental and physical, both mental and physical is built on an unconscious sense of regret, of, of rejection and guilt. It is necessary that each of us see complete forgiveness to, towards both ourselves and others. Because as our, as the text shows here, first of all, first, we are judged by the judgment with which we judge. So if we criticize, condemn, and censure, we, these are the attitudes that occupy our thinking. Think about that for a moment. Think about that. When you're holding on to a grudge, when you're holding on to pain, you aren't hurting that person. There's nothing you're doing that is impacting them directly. You're, you're, you're taking on that energy yourself. You're carrying that burden. You're holding on to. It's, it's like trying to uh, burn someone with, with fire. It's like trying to pick up fire and burn someone else. Just the concept of that seems ridiculous. But that's exactly what holding on to that grudge does. Is here's a fire. Let me pick up the fire and try to burn this person. But I'm burning myself all the while. That's, that's, that's really what's happening is I'm burning myself. Not them, because we could even try to hand the fire to them. They won't accept it. Who would accept fire in that sense? These thoughts occupy our minds. They will not only reflect themselves outwardly, they will also reflect themselves inwardly. So us holding on to those grudges has to, by law, by law, these things have to play out in our lives. They have to, because that's the law. So what are we holding on to? What are you holding on to? There's, there's a, a great question for our practical application. What are you holding on to? What, what anger, what hurt, what pain are you holding on to that you're continually reliving by not letting it go. Has someone wronged you? Has someone done something to hurt you in the past that you are 
holding on to, even that you are running away from. Oh, I'll never date a Cancer or a Capricorn ever again because I got hurt by a Capricorn. I'll never date so and such and such again. I'll never do this or that and the other. What are you holding on to that you, what past experience are you taking and putting in front of you to live into? There's a young, uh, young lady who's a really good friend of mine who had experienced a, a, a rape and had a significant anger towards men and men whom she was in a relationship with in particular. And she literally took out the anger of this rape on the men who she had gotten into these relationships with. She literally tried to punish them, if you will, for what this other person had done uh, to her. And, and she read this, this book, Radical Forgiveness, and I think it's guy, gay. I'm going to look that up while I'm talking because it's, it's going to bug me that I, I can't remember that. And you, you know what? I want to try out something here live on recording here. Well, how what an oxymoron, live recording. But I'm going to do this while I'm recording just to see how, how fun this will be. Because uh, sometimes this works and sometimes this wasn't. This sometimes it doesn't. Let's see. Uh, who wrote Radical Forgiveness? So we're going to see if this works. Nope, didn't work. I'm going to try one more time. It picked up something else. Let me see. Who wrote the book Radical Forgiveness? Okay, let me see here. Um, nope, it wasn't. That's, that's another book I'm thinking. Colin Tipping. That's the guy who wrote this book. Colin Tipping. And I love technology. If you haven't, if you haven't figured that out already, I am a techno geek, and I I really love technology. I was hoping that it would talk back to me and say, Colin Tipping wrote the book Radical Forgiveness, written in blah blah blah. That would have been cool, but no such luck today <laughs> for technology. But I got the answer for you. Colin Tipping is who wrote that book. So if you or someone you know is holding on to something that is preventing them from living, something that is hope preventing them from living full out, something that is preventing them from living in full out love and joy. Great, great book in forgiveness, not only of ourselves, but of, of, of others. And, and, and I, and I mention ourselves because we can be our, Ooh, we can be our worst judge. We really can. We can be very difficult. We can be very hard on ourselves. And one of the reasons why we, we are so hard on ourselves is that we don't have, some of us don't have the compassion filters in place to recognize what we are doing to ourselves. I wrote an article a while back about an experience I had with a young lady at a cash register. She was a cashier. We were, I think I was at a restaurant or somewhere. I was checking out, but she was ringing up my order and it wasn't working properly for some reason. There was something going on. She was hitting the wrong buttons and it just, things just weren't working out. And she, she had smashed her hand on the, on the table and said, oh, I'm so stupid. And, and I did this as an extension of love, as, as you'll find in a moment, because I know you're going to say, you said that? I, so I, I smacked my hand on the table as well, on the other side of the counter. I said, oh, you're so stupid. And she looked at me with just this look of, of just, she was appalled. How could you say that to me? How could you say that to me? And that, that's what she actually ended up saying. She said, how could you say that? How could you call me stupid? I said, you just called yourself stupid. You just called yourself stupid. So what's the difference between you calling yourself stupid and me calling you stupid? And 
she kind of sat there and stared at me for a moment, and I took it as an opportunity, as, as a teaching opportunity, if you will, and I shared with her the importance of self-compassion in that in our minds, we don't have the same filter that we have for someone else because it's challenging. And I'm sure you probably even felt uncomfortable with me saying, oh, you're so stupid, saying that aloud to that young lady. And it was uncomfortable to say it. But I think it was important at the time for her to really see how that, that negative self-talk is impacting her. So we spoke for a few moments and, and, and I even had her at that moment, you know, just to forgive yourself and, and, and be easy on yourself, love yourself, you know, slow down, take the time. And, you know, we finally ended up getting the order and everything correct. But at the end of the day, the lesson for her was to, to have the same level of compassion as you would for other people, um, have that same compassion for yourself. Because she, she was appalled when I said, oh, you're so stupid, but she completely, fully, 100% accepted it when she said it about herself. So here we are in a lesson of compassion, compassion and caring, not only for others, but also for ourselves, letting go of our past seemingly failures, letting go of our seemingly so-called mistakes until we release all of our own previous and I'm going to use the word seemingly mistakes and failures. And I like to use that word. I like to interject that into that sentence there because a lot of times the quote unquote mistakes and failures we make are actually universally or divinely guiding us towards what it is we really need to be doing. We may not see it or recognize it at the time, but a lot of times when you look back and say, wow, you know, that might have been a stupid decision at that time, but that was really great that that happened that way because blank, blank, and blank. But until we release the idea and the hurt and the pain, the judgment around those seemingly mistakes and failures, we shall merely be monotonously repeating them today. A great deal of our trouble, both mental and physical, is built on an unconscious sense of rejection and guilt. So we have to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I'm not going to sing Let It Go today uh, for you. <laughs> uh, unless, unless your comments dictate that I should. But, but with that, guys, think about what you are holding on to, if anything, you know, write it down and, you know, I've talked about this exercise before, burn it up, throw it out, tear it up, do whatever you need it, step on it, flush it down the toilet, whatever, whatever that thing is, go, go, go deep inside and pull that thing out and get it out of you because it's only causing disruption in your self and your person, whether that be some hurt that you may have experienced from another person. Uh, some wrongdoing that you felt was done to you or something that you may have done to yourself. With that, let's go ahead and transition into our meditation and affirmation for today. I'm going to take a deep breath and get myself centered and open and receptive to the, the energy and the spirit of the words that I'm going to say in first person. And I also invite you to do the same and receive whatever is here for you in this moment and use it in your life as you see fit. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath now. And we're going to hold it for a second and then release it just to get ourselves calm and peaceful. Today, I affirm that I forgive everyone and am forgiven by everyone. I affirm that the eternal spirit harbors no malice towards me or anyone else. Forgiving and being forgiven 
I have an inward sense of peace and tranquility. There is no anxiety, no sense of guilt, no fear of judgment. All mistakes of the past are now wiped out in my consciousness and I no longer carry any burden from them. I look forward to the future with joy in peace and gladness and live in the present with an inner assurance of being one with all life. And so it is. So thank you guys as always for being a part of this journey, O oh Mine. And I always ask that you comment, like, and share. And if you decide not to, I forgive you. <laughs> so <laughs> just kidding. Um, but no, I do uh, do want you to only share as you as you see fit uh, with sharing for people whom you feel can benefit from these lessons. As always, again, I appreciate you and I will look forward to seeing you on tomorrow with another lesson of 365 Signs of Mind. Take care.